Hi there, and welcome back to Abe's Workshop. A little bit of machining in this one, not too much. A uh, bit of a chat. Um, I answer a few viewers' questions, uh, particularly on my milling slide. So I'll go through that, how I went about making it and what have you on my milling slide. Not something I showed originally. I think I'd made it before I even started the channel. I make the little, uh, little ferrule, the little... Uh, bobbin for the fire piston I'll show you that there's not much to that either um, I've got a plan going forward to make a lead screw protector I'll show you my thoughts on that and actually going back to when I was on holiday uh, recently or oh, about a month ago now um, I came across in a field in Turkey a British made steam engine um, or traction engine steam roller I think it was a roller actually um, so I'll show a bit of footage of that and that was quite interesting how many miles from home was that Anyway, enjoy guys. So a little scrap end of the 10 mil bar in there. Just to make the bead for the little lanyard on the fire piston. Now we'll face the end off. Usual story. Here we are. That's faced. And I'll just pop a centre drill in there. I want a good about 5mm diameter just a little pilot to get the drill started through I'll put the chuck up 5mm drill which is the same size as I put in the uh, cap to take the little lanyard and there we go And I want to go through about 12 mil, so we'll just quickly drill this out. It's a nice sharp drill, that one. Quick squint at that. That should be more than enough. Let's get that drill out of the way. Chuck out the way. Let the dog see the rabbit a bit better here. And I'm going to take a tiny skim on the OD. Just cut it off. There we go. Just a clean up. Nothing fussy this, doesn't fit in or run in anything. Purely a little cosmetic bead. That should do me. I think we'll have a little 45 on the end. And I think we'll have a couple of grooves. So where are we? Let's set that on the end. Much the same as I did in the body. I'll set the DR over zero. Let's go uh, two and a half mil. Go to one on the DRO. We've got a two mil, which will be four and a half. Whoop. Do one again. There we go. Then the two mil will be six and a half. For that one, took the other still the same depth. Oop. There we go. There we go, all the same depth. And I'll give myself a little mark, two and a half mil from there, should be the end, which will be six and a half, seven, eight, nine. I'll give myself a little mark there. Means I can chop it off there. A little chamfer needed, I believe, on the end. What have I got here? Just on that bore. Because we don't want the bead cut in the lanyard. Get a little radius on there.
So I just cut it off with a hacksaw. Let's just face the other end to the line that I marked on there. Both fingers and thumbs this morning. There we are, it's just gone almost just to the witness line. Okay, I've got a shampoo on this side as well. Just a little shampoo here, can I get in? Yeah. I'm putting the blender radius on there. Uh, a little chamfering tool, I think. What have we got? Don't do me. This is a chamfer in the pour. And carefully just blend that chamfer into a little radius with a, a little needle file. Get close to the chuck here for comfort, really. That is the little brass bead for the lanyard. Let me bring you in shot. See if you can see it here. Little brass bead for the lanyard, three little grooves in it. And that's that done. Five mil bore, just cleaned up the outside, three little grooves, some radiuses on the outside edges. So we'll fit that together and we'll let you have a look at it. So I fitted the little bead on the end of the lanyard. Um, there's a knot in the centre back here which stops it pulling through the cap. Yeah, it won't pull through. I have given it a, a good try, otherwise I'd have made a tiny bead for the back. And bead on that end, simply passed them through the little bead, tied a little knot in the two of them, cut the ends, trimmed them, just flamed them off. And there we are, we've got the lanyard, where are we, uh, for holding it on. So other than making a uh, pouch of some description, that's the end of the fire piston project. I played about with it a bit. Um, I did actually change the O-ring. I found the one that was in there was just, it was catching and rubbing. I increased the radius in the end a bit just to make life easy for it when entering. Because um, the first one all chewed up. So I've changed that very slightly, slightly different size O-ring. And happy days, it's working now quite consistently. And I did actually use a piece of cotton from an old tea towel, uh, you know, a, a thread bare uh, cotton, what do we call it, uh, dish cloth, should we call it, or washing or drying cloth, um, like a, a Irish cotton, I believe it was, and made some char cloth from the Irish cotton rather than from that uh, yellow cotton duster that I had before. And it actually burns for a lot longer and seems to light more readily. So, yeah. Um, the old sort of uh, linen or cotton um, dishcloth that I had or glass cloth is actually far better than that uh, yellow duster that I started with. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the fire piston complete and in working order. Just need some sort of uh, travel pouch now, but we'll, we'll see how we get on with that. A few viewers have asked me how I went about fitting my milling slide um, here on this WM180. Um, as you know, there isn't a bracket or anything like that. I bought this milling slide. It's a sort of standard eBay, you know, what have you, cheap, cheerful. I'm not exactly sure where I got this from now. I think it might have been RDG Tools, not sure. Um, but yeah, basically cheap and simple little milling slide. I've modified it a bit for my own purposes with these uh, blocks and what have you, but that's another story. But to fit it, what I needed to do... First of all, I thought, well, I'm going to need some sort of bolts in the bottom of here to bolt it down on the bed. And I didn't want to obviously drill holes in the bed here to bolt it down right through my dovetails and, uh, and what have you. So I needed an intermediate plate. So I got a piece of 12mm plate. Um, so I dressed it all up as best I could. Um, obviously, I removed the compound slide. And you'll see on the compound slide, to retain the compound slide, you've got the little swivel plate and it's got a 6mm dowel pin in the centre and two M5s on the outside. So basically on this end of this plate, um, I, mean, no, I know I've got a radius on here, that's just because it looks nice, but um, 
yeah I mean that sits on that dowel and I've actually drilled and tapped a couple of holes in the side of the block because they have funny length screws to get them right so I keep the screws safe anyway that having said that um, let's just pull one out so what I've got there is the facility let me just line up to put two screws in the back here there's the one let's just pull the other one out and I've stoned this it was a piece of uh, bright man steel plate I mean it's all I had at the time um, so I've got the facility to bolt this end of the plate down on the bed without modifying the lathe at all and then at a point at the back here I've got another little screw here um, avoiding the um, little holes here and the um, the lead nut and the little uh, hole here with the adjustment screw in I've drilled and tapped beyond that in a safe area another M5 thread um, another counterboard hole for a little M5 Allen bolt and as you can see I've then got a three point location for my plate I won't do those up at present when I drilled the one in the bed I just had these nipped I clocked up this space so I knew I was square and then I spotted through drilled tapped and clamped it down and it runs within about a thou or so on that this space um, you know squid of all the troubles in the world and what have you what I then needed to do was work out a position on this plate where I was going to put the uh, milling slide so what I did is wound the carriage or the cross slide I should say right to the end of its travel until it comes off the lead nut as a as a, a reference point so to speak which is there now I get a reading off my DRO for that so I basically set my DRO to zero there and then brought it back all the way to the other end right to the other extremity where it butts up against the uh, the collar here let's have a quick look keep going oh, just trying to show you how I did it here you probably probably got the drift by now so I came right to the other end took a measurement of the DRO and basically split the two to find the center point and I decided that was going to be the center point of my slide which meant that I had equal travel away that way and equal travel this way which gives me the optimum distance for milling in the head around its center line so to speak so I then got to thinking well how am I going to fit that onto there am I just going to bolt it down but I wanted the possibility of swiveling it from left to right so I basically copied the setup that we've got that holds the compound on or the original setup and add to a certain degree I've got a tapered plug which is tapped two M5s again with the M6 dowel exactly the same as here uh, let me just pop this back off I know there was a reason why I didn't do all these up here we are two seconds right just pull those screws out of there so the little plate I've got your tapered plate fits in a tapered bore in the back of this plate which I did by clamping this up on the face plate in the lathe um, and then just basically bored that I kept the setting of the compound uh, exactly the same when I turned the plug so that plug sits in there and it's slightly below surface so it doesn't foul um, Another little issue I did have um, was this little nut here wasn't clearing the underside of this plate. So as you can see, there's a recess there. It's probably about a millimeter below surface when it's pulled up and it misses the top of the, the little lead nut holder. So that's that. Let's pop those back on again. Which one's which? Here we go. I'll just put these in, these in loosely for now. I'll put the back bolt in for the purposes of this. So as you can see, this 
plate will lift up and can rotate. So exactly the same hole pattern again in the bottom of my block. I drilled and reamed the hole in the middle, two holes wider out, and two little counter bolts down in there to take the bolts. Just line that up. And now my slide will slide down over there. See if I can bring you in here. Ooh. Let's get these bolts started. Where are we? Somewhere around here. Why can't I get that bolt started? A bit of light on the subject. There we go. And the back one. So as you can see, my milling slide has got the option to rotate as well. Now I can set it at various angles. So I can set it square on. I could also set it that way. I could set it round this way if I liked. I lose a bit of height because uh, it can't go below its base. But at this position, it will go beyond this table. So I can use the full stroke. But I do have to take off my little uh, cross leg lock when I'm doing it. But yeah, if I nip down on these two bolts, it pulls up on that tapered uh, bushing underneath. If I tighten up on that, as you can see, it locks it down solid. So yeah, it gives me that bit of versatility. It's purely a bit of half inch plate. Let me get a rule here and give you a bit of an idea should you want to go along a similar route yourself. It's half inch thick, um, three inch wide, and its overall length is, we'll call it around four and a half inch. So you're looking at 120 mil by 75 by 12, we'll call it, was my plate. So yeah, that's how I went about having that sort of versatility to mount the milling slide on the lathe. Um, it involved drilling one, one modification to the lathe itself, which is drilling one, <coughs> excuse me, little M5 tapped hole in the back. But yeah, I've done loads of milling work on it. You've probably seen the videos where I've been using it. And I find it really useful. Of course, another great aspect of doing it this way is that I can simply loosen off the two screws here and I can set an angle to mill, you know, tapers, angles, what have you, either direction. I can rotate it right round this way, you know, if I've got a... Oh, more likely to be using it round this way, but, uh, you know, if I've got a milling to do on the end of a part running in this orientation, uh, you know, 45's either way, it just gives me that versatility. But I've... Design-wise, I basically utilised exactly the same setup. Um, you know, the, the rotating ring with the fixed centres um, for two M5s that the compound sits on. Um, I can actually, if I want to, I can remove this and my compound slide in its original guise will fit on in this position as well as back here. So it just gives you more versatility for your compound as well because instead of bolting the compound directly on the carriage here I could bolt my compound down on back here on this plate where the uh, where the milling slide is so yeah I hope that uh, clears it up those people that were asking the question how I went about it um, yeah simple really it's a piece of plate with some holes in a bit of drilling it's all drilling and tapping really um, other than that yeah, it needed a bit of working out as to how I was going to go about it. Um, obviously, depending on what milling slide you get um, is, you know, what, what numbers and sizes and what have you are going to have to use. But that was a basic idea of what I had in mind. Obviously, I had to cut some Allen bolts to length because it's, uh, you know, the, I, I didn't have any in stock the right size. And these are different to ones I've got, you know, in stock. They're not round metric sizes. So I drilled and tapped a couple of holes in the side of the block here. So that when it's in storage, not being used, I can take it off, and I haven't lost the uh, haven't lost the Allen bolts. So yeah, that's it. That's the milling slide adapter plate. So here's something that's been bugging me for a while, and I have come up with a plan. But my lead screw during use is in the line of fire to get all sorts of rubbish in it and what have you, and I'd like to keep it clean. 
I mean, obviously, you know, it's it's nice to keep it clean. I do keep it clean. Uh, let me just it's revolve in there. You know, I basically brush it round, give it a clean off, try and get all the swarf out. I spray it with a bit of WD-40 get all the muck out of it, so on and so forth, as you can see. It's quite easy to clean, but it's something that every time I clean the lathe down, I see dirt in there, and it bugs me. So I'm going to order myself a piece of Delrin nylon, acetyl, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's not going to be nylon, because that's just a pain with its stringy swarf, but a piece of Delrin. Probably something like about... Let's have a look. What size is the lead screw? The lead screw comes out yeah, about 15 mil. And let me just get a tape measure. If I wind my carriage right back until my dial hits, I want it to be able to expand to, let's say, a foot. Give myself a bit more so that it's right back against the, uh, the back. From a foot down to its minimum sort of size, which, yeah, probably about two inches which is about as close as I go in normal use so yeah I'm gonna call that an inch and a half because I can always take this stop off so I want basically what's going to be a series of top hats which pull out from each other which are fastened at both ends in stepping down in sizes you know the final one will fit be a nice bit just over the screw there um, maybe with a flange on it and the same the other end so I can put a screw in there and screw in there so that as I pull the carriage back and forth or work the carriage back and forth all the time it will concertina up and you know spread out and contract as I'm using it so yeah just a little thought I was looking at the design of it a series of stepped top hats that will pull out from each other and will push back in I think I need to get on the internet and order myself a bit of bar not something I use all that often is uh is a seat lot Delrin bar. Well, about 4,000 kilometers from the UK, I come across traction engine, Abling and Porter, Rochester, Kent. Now this is a long way from home. Anyway, it's pretty much all there. I bet that'd make a good uh, restoration job for somebody. But, how much would it cost to get it back to the UK? That was a worry. Something just bit me. What did? I don't know. Well, it's a roller. I can't work that out what it is. The name on the front. More chain steering. Piston still there. All the gear's still there. Only thing's missing is the flywheel. Oh no, flywheel's on the other side. Even the wooden roof is still intact to some degree.